In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create a virtual machine or a VM on Google Cloud Platform. This is Google's offering for cloud computing, which is one of the most common use cases for the cloud, especially as a data engineer. So in today's video, we'll go through step-by-step -step how to create a VM on Google Cloud. We'll talk about different ways for you to interact and access it. And then finally, we'll review some common use cases, especially for those of you who are data engineers. The first step for creating a virtual machine is to come into your Google Cloud console and go over to Compute Engine. There's a few other ways you could get here, but this is a common way. And what you want to do first is enable the Compute Engine API, because as you'll notice, as you start working more with Google Cloud, everything is essentially an API. So the first thing you need to do is enable this. And that might take a few minutes to complete, but once it's ready, you're now able to actually use this API. So what you wanna do is come over here to the options over here, under Compute Engine, go to VM Instances. Now from here, there are two places you could go to create your virtual machine. You can create an instance right here by clicking this button or up here, they're both the same. All right, so we'll just go through the very basic options here that you'll see there are a lot of things, but we'll just go through the basics to get it going and get your first virtual machine built. So number one is giving it a name. I'm gonna name this my demo VM, but you put whatever you want. You can add different labels if you wanna organize your project and use that in other ways. And then down here is region, and region is where it's physically going to live in a server somewhere. So for my case, it's in the US, Iowa. In your case, you probably wanna pick wherever your user base or the people using it. But for me, I'm just gonna go central and the same with zone. There's obviously different options, but for me, I'm just gonna leave it as the default. Now, when we get to machine configuration, there are, again, a lot of options here and reviewing all these is outside the scope of this video. There's a lot of documentation that you can go to learn more about it. For example, if you click on this pricing option here, you can understand how all this is broken down. And as you can see here, there are a lot of different types. We have the general purpose, you have compute optimized, memory optimized, shared core, it's just gonna scroll down forever. If you really wanna get specific on your options, you can go through here and pick what makes the most sense for you. And again, based on your location and all those other factors. But what I typically work with is the general purpose and you can go to the different generations for this. And more importantly, usually is the machine type, which indicates the scope and the size of how much you're working with here. So for me, I'm gonna just click the micro size because this is just a demo and you can see how the price goes down. And this is a monthly estimate, assuming you're basically having it run the entire month, but also understand that you can set schedules for how often something is running and you're only gonna pay for when it's live. So you could potentially get a more powerful machine, which will have a higher monthly rate, but maybe you only had it running for an hour or two a day on a schedule. You can see what the price is here per hour and factor it in that way. Moving down here, we have containers. And one thing you can do with virtual machines as well is build it with a container. So if you have something you've built on your container registry within Google, you can also use that here and add specific arguments so that it's customized however you want. And you know, you use an image, you can just create a bunch of different virtual machines based on the same underlying image. That's an option here. Boot disk is determining the size of your actual disk. So imagine you had a computer, it has storage and a disk on it. This is where you can determine what each new machine will have under the hood when it boots up. So in this case here, it's creating a new persistent disk of 10 gigabytes every single time. And it's just using this base image of a Linux. So it's creating a 10 gigabyte Linux virtual machine. But again, if you pick different types, they're gonna cost more. So SSD typically costs a little bit more. You can change the size, et cetera. And of course there are other options if you want to use custom or snapshots of previous versions. I typically just start with the basics and then adjust as I see fit. Down here we get to access. And again, this is nice because it comes built in with a default service account. Google Cloud operates a lot on what's called service accounts if you're not used to that. So you can either create a custom service account with specific permissions and all that stuff. But the Compute Engine does have a default service account that you can use. Scopes now are determining the API access. Remember we mentioned that Google Cloud is based primarily on different APIs. You can see the default settings here of what it has access to, storage, service management, and read write to service control. So that's again, another way to limit the scope here. Firewall is with networking here. So many other ways to access this virtual machine from outside traffic. So you can lock this down a little bit more, keep it more open. Again, it depends on your use case. And then under management here, one thing that I like, especially when it comes to data tools and open source tools is you can add a startup script here, which is really nice. It's a shell script that you can have run anytime this boots up. So maybe you want to run a program and have some sort of service startup every time you start your machine. You can add this script here. And again, it's just like a shell script that you can add here and it'll just run it every time you start it. So you can always be sure that certain services or tools or whatever it is are running once the machine runs as well. And you can manage this all from here. It's gonna take a few minutes for it to actually boot up. Now that this is starting to run here, let's poke in here and see how to work with the VM. 
Within here, obviously, you can see all of the basic information on what we just created and the networking, the falls interface, all this stuff here that we just went through and built. But when you want to actually work with it, there's a few ways you can do it. Number one, and I think the easiest way is to just click this SH button right here. And what it's going to do is open up an in-browser type of terminal to allow you to write commands and work with the virtual machine. And it's going to SSH keys for you and handle all of that behind the scenes because you clicked through here. So here we can see it's logged into my demo VM under my username. And from within here, you can start to run any normal commands. Let's say I want to make a new directory called demo dir and then list and there it is. So you can start to build things, run commands, install applications just as you would from a regular machine from the command line. So that's one way to do it in a way I find that I commonly work with it just because it's easy and you can do it right in the browser. Another common way to work with not only virtual machines, but really any other Google Cloud resource is through what's called G Cloud. And G Cloud is their command line tool. You would do this locally to your machine, but here, if you had G Cloud installed, you could just run this command and this would SSH into this VM. Just copy this here and run this in your local machine if you had that. And you can easily look to, on how to install G Cloud here and get that on your local machine so that you can do exactly all this stuff that we're talking about just from your local machine. Alternatively, you could run in the cloud shell. So if you click this here, this is effectively running the equivalent of G Cloud as if you had it on your local machine just on Google Cloud itself, so you don't have to install anything locally. And then, for example, here, if I were to run this command, it just copied it for me here. You can authorize to run the command and it'll update the SSH metadata for you, which is really just the keys and the permissions. It handles this for you because you're the one running it. And now we're logged in. Now we're in the same position that we were just in a moment ago. So if you do LS, we can see that demo DIR directory that we just built previously is already here. So again, this is another example of how you could work with your virtual machine. The other area that I'll use a lot, if you click show more here, there's different ports. And sometimes you won't really need to worry about this, but one that I do use on occasion is serial port one, and it says console. This is gonna give you a real time look at the logs and what's going on on the machine at any given moment. So if you can go all the way to the bottom, you can poke around, you can see it's messing around with keys and stuff. You could refresh and it'll give you the latest version if you did run something. And really where this comes into play, maybe you added a startup script and you wanna come in here and just make sure that things are running. You can come in here, click refresh, and you'll see line by line exactly what's going on and how far along a script is going. Or maybe you just wanna come in and monitor a previous run that you had for one of the tools that you installed. You could come in here and see the line by line logs of what was going on. And it's just a nice way to debug and keep an eye on your server. Another thing here is up at the top, we have the start and resume. We have stop, suspend, and then delete. Now I don't have support of suspend because of the type of instance I'm using. And the real big difference here to point out is that when you stop it, you're just temporarily shutting it down. Whereas if you delete it, you are completely deleting the instance and you're gonna have to start from scratch. If you stop it, you will still have the disks, any directories you made, anything you installed, et cetera, all that stuff would still remain. So the next time you restarted it, it would still remain in that state as it was when you stopped it. Whereas if you delete it, you're also going to delete the boot disk. So you're going to start from scratch and it's gonna be as if you never used it before. And one last thing I'll point out here is what you can do is create a schedule. We talked about in the beginning, the costs of things, sometimes it's pretty expensive, but maybe you just wanna run it for an hour or a few minutes in a day. You can come in here and create a schedule so that you can be very specific on when something starts, when it stops, the dates, the frequency, maybe repeat daily. You can do what you want and then assign a schedule to an instance. You can keep things a little more under control, keep your costs down while still getting all the features of your virtual machine. Now, the last section of this video, I wanna talk about just a few examples of what you might use a virtual machine for as a data engineer specifically, because this channel, we focus mostly on data tools. And so I'm just gonna pull over here a few examples. Obviously there are many, you can really host whatever you want. For example, an open source tool like Airbyte, which is for the extract and load, you can deploy this on a Google compute engine. So here it's giving you some recommended instance sizes, different attributes to set, to install Google Cloud, run the G Cloud command. So we just spoke about that. And then once you're SSH'd into your machine, you would run these commands. And this is essentially installing Airbyte onto that virtual machine so that you can then use it. And you would then come in here and be able to start it up so that it's active, it's running, and you can use it as if it was on a local machine, but it's hosted in the cloud. Another option here is Prefect, or this could be Airflow or really any other open source tool. And what you could do is come in here and make sure you have Python on your virtual machine, install Prefect and start a worker on that machine. So that's actively running and you can just trigger your workflows from that machine as opposed to your local server. And then one more example here is Kafka, which is a messaging tool, open source. And you would come on here and follow these commands to install 
launch your Kafka server, but all this would be running on your virtual machine as opposed to again, locally or anywhere else, you have full control to do what you want. Now, obviously these are different tools that you could use, but you could use the virtual machine to host a website. You could just run Python scripts or really whatever you want. It's computation in the cloud available for you to use as a computer. And the options are really unlimited to whatever it is you want to do with that computation. Working with the cloud and specifically virtual machines is critical for any data engineer. And hopefully now you have a better idea of how to do that on Google Cloud. So thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.